another day, it's another react video, and today's react video is to an article by the... No, that can't be right. By the CNN? What? Come on, get it together! Hello, my beautiful and intellectually curious love bugs. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nancy. I'm an entomologist, which means that I study bugs, and I am here to cure your fears about insects and debunk all of the BS that is around the insects, especially when they come from news sources that are generally pretty reputable. Come on, get it together. So we are going to go through this article because, damn, and it is... 2020 was a year of scary bugs, and 2021 will be even worse. This is by AJ Willingham from CNN. I think this is the thing that like shocks me that this journalism could be on such a like prolific and fairly trusted news site, but whatever, okay, we're, just, we're just gonna go through it. And they have a picture of the periodical cicadas, and it's important to note that if this is what they're going to be talking about as the big scary bugs, that's hilarious because yes, they're loud and yes, they're annoying, but by dangerous or scary, definitely not. So let's get into this. In biblical terms of awfulness, 2020 ticked every box. There was war, there was famine, and above all, there was pestilence. There were scary bugs because yes, bugs are obviously so much worse than famine, and war. There were so, so many scary bugs, weird worms, poisonous caterpillars, and all sorts of invasive whatnots added a little spice to our quotation pandemic anxieties. And of course, hovering above it all, there were murder hordes. Okay, wow, there's like so much to go through. I can't even get through two sentences. Okay, so there's always been so, so many insects. There's always been weird worms, which aren't even bugs or insects. There were always poisonous caterpillars, although I'm assuming you mean the venomous ones that can actually sting you and not the poisonous ones, because I doubt you're going around eating caterpillars. And invasive whatnots, not even a link to which invasive whatnots, I'm going to assume that you mean the spotted lanternfly, because that gained a lot of publicity in 2020 and was really kind of obvious on how much economic damage it was causing. And of course there were murder hornets. I've talked about murder hornets here, here, and here, so if you want real information about these beautiful insects, feel free to click on any of these videos. Unfortunately, it's not over. In 2021, the largest brood of cicadas in the United States, appropriately named Brood X, will awake from a 17-year sleep and burrow out of the cold earth, ushering in a new season of Baroque bug horrors. This person has great vocabulary and is very good at like hyping up a very normal biology. I mean, the cicadas, the dog day cicadas, so the cicadas that you find every year in the summer in the United States, like they do all this too. They crawl out of the ground and buzz. Like that's kind of what cicadas do. They just live underground for one, five, seven, 13 or 17 years and then crawl up the trees like you know leave those exoskeletons around as they transform from their nymphal stage to their adult stage and buzz a whole lot to be like yo ladies over here i'm over here pay attention to me this is a very normal insect biology that you are making seem crazy and weird very normal there's like three thousand species of cicada or something so you know three thousand different species do this oh we're not quite there yet, ready? Before that particular nightmare literally bursts forth, take a look back at the year in scary bugs. They have a picture of the Asian giant hornet here. So that's that's on our list of scary bugs because why, why name it what it is when you could name it murder hornet, am I right? Do the worst words back to back. Murder hornets, also known as the Asian giant hornets, made quite the entrance in May, when they were spotted in the United States for the first time in Washington state. You're right, murder hornet are the two worst words to put together because that doesn't even describe the biology of this beautiful animal. It is a hornet, it's in the genus Vespa. However, it's not murdering anyone, it's eating honeybees. Like that's what it does in Asia, where it's from. It's 
predator on honeybees. That's how it works. It's just, just it's biology. But pretty generally, right now, the only people that they're a problem to are beekeepers and in upstate Washington, northwest Washington. We had one established nest. It was eradicated. We're keeping an eye on the situation. And unless you are from northwest Washington, the murder hornets, or as they're actually named, the Asian giant hornet, is not a problem to you whatsoever. How did scary bug scientists know that they were dealing with a specific pack of invasive flying nightmares? The decapitated bee carcasses were a big clue. Asian giant hornets can get up to two inches long and kill a person with multiple stings. Honeybees are way more dangerous because they're in contact with way more people and many people are allergic to honeybee stings. It takes like 40 Asian giant stings to even kill or hospitalize a person. So you're probably more likely, you're way more likely to die from a honeybee than you are from one of these. Luckily, it looks like murder hornets take a little break from being evil in the winter, so we have a respite before they rear their murderous heads once more. This kind of vocabulary, while it's so good at inciting fear, really is just that. It doesn't talk about the wonders of how insects can even overwinter. Did you know that some insects even have antifreeze proteins in their blood to keep them from freezing solid? Check out this video about that. And talks about these very normal, natural cycles of insect biology as if there's something to be so afraid of. Imagine if we talked about any other animal like this, like the sea lion with its extraordinary weight will come up and it will open its big jaws filled with giant pointy and bone crushing teeth and snap up sweet delicate little penguins in a little more than a single thought before its giant jaws rear down and smash the penguin and crush it and swallow it whole, right? Sea lions now sound pretty terrifying, but you ask most people and they think they're cute, right? So you can use language in any way to villainize or to make these animals look beautiful, which is what they really are. I'm gonna do this, all right, anyway, let's just keep going. Zombie cicadas. If you're interested in learning more about the zombie cicadas, you can check out this video I did with my friend Brian and also with Joni. Horror movies have nothing on Massifora, a psychedelic fungus that invades the bodies of the cicadas in West Virginia in June, turning its host into unthinking, sex-crazed, fungal zombies. I told you, go watch this video. The fungus burrows into the cicada through an orifice, any orifice, usually through the spiracles, which are like the breathing tubes on the side of the insect, and slowly takes over, eating away at healthy tissue and replacing it with fungal matter. As the fungus controls the bug's brain, it gets the uncontrollable urge to mate, which helps the fungus spread. Perhaps the worst part is that the cicadas are still fully functional during this hostile spread, and they show no indication knowing that they've been taken over until it's too late, including the fact that if its abdomen has been like fallen off, they just kind of like walk around and not notice that like half their body is missing. Here is half of a cicada walking around like everything's fine. <laughs> doop 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 doop. Doo. <laughs> wow. That's spectacular. So there's no but. No worries. There's so much research going on about mind control in insects. How does it work? There's some evidence to suggest that it's not even actually controlling the brain, but is actually just taking over the nervous system and is controlling the insect via just the nervous system and the ganglions and not necessarily the central nervous system. So that is a really, really interesting aspect. And as for insects that are going to like crawl up a stalk and then like lash their jaws on and a big fungus pops out of the back of their brain, while all that is going on, there is some evidence to suggest that the fungus is actually just turning on a mechanism that makes the insect want to go to sleep. It's kind of turning on those let's go to sleep behaviors, which may explain why we can see this parasitic mind control fungus evolve so many different times in different fungus groups and also within different insect groups. Very interesting, groundbreaking research. 10 out of 10, do recommend following that.
The spotted lantern flies. Okay, the spotted lantern fly is arguably the most scary out of this whole list, and that's because it's causing economic damage, which hurts you in your wallet. It makes those groceries of yours like kind of skyrocket in price. So out of all of these so far, the spotted lantern fly is actually concerned, not on like, oh my God, the bug is scary kind of panic, but how are we going to control this insect so that way we minimize and mitigate as much economic crop loss as possible. In August, residents in some New Jersey counties got a double dose of quarantine when they were asked to protect themselves from an onslaught of spotted lantern flies. I feel like onslaught is actually like a pretty okay word to use here because they can lay like hundreds and hundreds of eggs per female. They don't have really any predators here. Entire trees just be covered in them. I mean, it's crazy. Scientists want these things dead or alive just so we can track their spread. While they don't have a propensity for bloodshed, these big insects still look pretty metal. Their black and white spotted wings cover bright red bodies, and their sin of choice is endangering indigenous flora and fauna. They are also an excellent hitchhiker, according to the New Jersey Department of Agriculture. Yeah, they're actually like a big agricultural pest, in addition to any of the damage that they could do with our native fauna which is a big problem, for example, with the emerald ash borer. They can endanger local flora. However, most people right now are really concerned about the economic agricultural aspects of this. Brain tapeworms. I do not study the tapeworms, but I'm not sure how much intelligent commentary I'm gonna have on this because tapeworms are not within the field of insects or bugs. Tapeworms are worms. They're their own thing. I don't know much about them. Venomous triple-like caterpillars. I've definitely talked about this before as well. Behold, the fluffiest, the most evil caterpillar to ever slink the earth. In October, multiple sightings of the pus caterpillar were reported in Virginia, prompting the state's Department of Forestry to warn against petting or even approaching the creatures. Their brown fur is oozing with venom and just brushing up against one can cause an itchy rash, vomiting, swollen glands, fever, and according to one resident who was stung, pain like a scorching hot knife. The caterpillars are native to areas in the far south and midwest, so experts were pretty puzzled when they reared their furry heads in Virginia. Okay, so venomous caterpillars are definitely a thing. Do not pet the fluffy caterpillars. I know they look so cute. You're like, this is probably the one insect that is adorable that I might actually want to touch. But for the love of all bugs, do not touch the fluffy or spiny caterpillars. They will sting you. The important thing to know is that if you, it does sting you, it hurts and you just kind of walk it off. I mean, it, like it's, it's annoying and like it, it, it hurts. I've, I've been stung by some caterpillars before. It definitely is uncomfortable, but you're not gonna like roll over and die or anything. So, you know, just don't touch or pet the fluffy caterpillars. Pay attention where you're putting your hand if you're walking through the woods and it's fine. Literally almost never makes the news because it's like not a big deal. Hammerhead worms, which again, I'm not a worm person. So I do not know, cannot comment very much. Finally, we are into the brood eggs. This article is like so much filler because they didn't actually have anything probably intelligent to say about the cicadas. Well, let's get into it. And so we come to the future of our scary bug world. In all honesty, cicadas aren't that scary. They are not at all scary. They are loud, yes. Are they annoying? Yes. You wish they would shut up? Probably, but are they scary? Definitely not. They are, however, very loud, and if too many get underfoot during a heavy season, quite crunchy. Because once the cicadas are done mating, they literally just like drop dead to the ground. It's a thing that happens. In Ecuador every year, we have these really beautiful Zamara blue cicadas, and they buzz, and you just find hundreds of them dead on the ground in a day, just because there's that many of them, and they just fall out of the trees. Brood X is the largest and widest ranging of the 15 cicada cycles that invade the United States every so often. They don't invade, they're native. They belong there. That, that's what they, they're not invading. And areas in the mid-Atlantic will be blanketed with the things come spring. You see, cicadas have a pretty nifty way of avoiding predators. They come out in mass. And even though they're out there for the eating, cicada broods are so large that predators literally can't get to them all. It's a legitimate strategy. Mayflies also do this. Sometimes you have to snowplow mayflies' bodies and carcasses 
off their grounds. The bugs buzz around for a few weeks and then lay their eggs in the ground before dying off. When they're gone, a new generation of cicada remains growing and waiting just below our feet. Author's note. The same cicada brood took over the Washington DC area when I was in high school. In the cafeteria one day, a boy in my class looked me dead in the eye from across the room, opened his mouth to reveal a whole cicada on his tongue. Reader, he ate it. I can't imagine cicadas would be particularly tasty to eat. They're basically just hollow on the inside. They're just like exoskeleton and tracheal tubes to really make that sound really loud. So I can't imagine when he ate it, it was particularly tasty. It was probably just very crunchy. However, eating insects is like not a big deal. Eating insects is actually a thing that many cultures and many people do around the world. If you want to see me eat some katsos, which are beetles here in Ecuador, you can click this video right here. Well, my beautiful love bugs, I hope that you liked today's React video. We did a little bit of reading, but I hope that you liked it anyway. Let me know if you find any other fear-mongering articles, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will get to them. This one, this article was posted in my learning community on Facebook called The Sci Hive. If you are interested in joining The Sci Hive, you can find the link also in the reference section below. Well, love bugs, you can click up here for more commentary and react videos. You can click down here for some entomology explains. So, you know, learning a little bit more about entomology as a whole. I will see you on Monday for my turf wars video that will be going out. Feel free to watch Cheryl's most recent one here and the one that she responded to, which was mine down here. All right, see you all Monday. Bye.